rough with him. Bit of a kind of coming together and then something happened here, hopefully. So, welcome back, step two. And I'll do 15 minutes. They're doing great things. <coughs> It'd be nice to see at the end, actually, to see the lineup. <coughs> Maybe not, not the best thing to tell you now, though, sorry. <laughs> there will be a lineup. <laughs> it's lovely to see the whole lot. <laughs> Ta-da! Look what happened today. All right, so, well, actually, the light has changed. You probably noticed the light has, light has changed quite significantly for you, I'd say, as well, so that the vase itself feels a bit brighter now than um, I remember that, you know. And what's in here is the darker. I'm just going to drink some more of that. Brown and green really is what I'm using. I don't know where I put the actual palette. I had it in my hand. Oh, oh. That's your one, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's alright, I can I just use this one here. But I wanted to put something deeper on and then maybe to pull out the shape of one of the daffodils or something and, and using these brushes that I, I think I recommended you get them. So mm -hmm. um, I quite like the square brushes for explaining things. But I'm cross hatching to create a dark from behind mm. um, do, you know, do you know that leafy stencil that you were using? Do you want to find it? Do you know where it might be? Or? It's yeah, it's on the table. table. Oh, I'll yeah. just go and get it. Okay. Um, I'll put it back on the table. Oh, perfect. I mean, I wouldn't actually use it at all. Whew. Okay, so just really dry, dry brush and then just cross hatching with the flat side in order to get something for a, you know a good dark foil for whatever will happen with the daffodils coming out and Fiona you were talking about it being a bit irritating having to kind of try and get over the green that's there already <laughs> so I, I, I wanted to kind of say something about that like what we might end up doing <coughs> It's upstairs, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a chair. Okay. Sorry, different kind of tea room. <laughs> There's some glue on there, actually. It's kind of nice to wipe it away. So what is it now? Yeah, so kind of having put on the dry... When it's, when it's going on dry, it's fairly, um, it'll dry quickly too, you know, with no water in it, I can almost paint over it now. Um, but I wanted to put a little bit more fluidity into it to just describe what I'm seeing as general foliage here too. And this is the hooker's green mixed with the um, Van Dyke brown. <coughs> to be honest, it might be burnt umber, I'm not sure, it's one or the other. more dark to work into and then there might be I may as well get that stencil sure I kind of thought maybe rather than lift off that I might just um, use a slightly different green. It's not different enough. Some more yellow, lemon yellow, in to make it a bit lighter. And really, I have to do is get my white paint as well. Sorry, but this one. See, you're all doing really exciting things. It's exciting, isn't it, to see each other's work? Yeah. It is. Yes. Like, I think really that's often where this is most beneficial, really. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to put a touch of white into that. Because um, I can see some, the underside of some leaves there feel to me to be this kind of colour. Um, Maybe, maybe there might have a bit more cadmium yellow on it actually. It may not, it didn't stick my palette down even. I'm just going to try some more of the cadmium yellow, maybe even a touch of cadmium red, because to me it, it still looked as though it needed a bit more, um, some kind of warmer green. I don't even 
don't know if it's particularly dancing or just the general feel of there being something like this tone in there as well. In that area. And maybe a few on their own too. I think the thing about it is that it softens an edge and lets it maybe make some, some kind of sense of the carry-on in there, you know. And I might turn it darker then for this. That's a yellow green, really. That's the thing that's going up there, I just know the name of it. Anyway, that's one thing. And then I thought I would try and explain uh, maybe just even a single one. Oh, yeah, so I was talking too about how putting paint over. But I'm sorry about this, I need to go and get some more yellow. But putting some paint over the green in such a way that it sits up over the top, like finding ways to make the daffodils really sing out. Um, so I'll just bring these down and I use these for palettes because they don't wear a good many. Well, I'm not taking the thing off it. Okay. So let's see. I suppose the first port of call and maybe the quickest way might be to even just use my finger to put a few bits of acrylic down quite thickly just to locate where the daffodils and the narcissus, whatever they're called, are now located. Like I might just put something for the trumpety bit. It'll be a different shade of yellow, but even just a vague indication. I won't even make a proper attempt at that. Um, put that there. And then there's another lovely one over here. Like you, you don't have to paint every single one of the flowers that you see, especially in the afternoon. Some of the hellebores have really drooped. Excuse me, that's not going to be an issue tomorrow, hopefully. We'll have different flowers. But the, the daffodils are now the kind of thing that are stealing the show. And like you were pointing out, um, Norma, some of the daffodils have opened a little bit more. So I put some white into that cadmium yellow. I'm looking at this daffodil here and how lovely a shape it is. And that maybe this might be one to um, carve out. Did you see the one I was talking about? Mm -hmm. It's that one there, you know, mm -hmm. turn to the side, I just thought, mm -hmm. from my vantage point, it looks like that may be a, mm -hmm. one that I could chisel out, and, and with doing something loosely around it, it, it makes you feel like honing in on one bit, and um, it makes me feel like that anyway, just then. So, so I think that's what I do, like, under normal circumstances, I'd feel like keeping everything going, coming back, and doing some more, and coming back, but just now I want to, from start to finish, um, show how I would tackle with these brushes painting, I say, a daffodil like this, you know. So let's see now. Um, I think the quickest way, like, I'm just observing the shape of the, the position of the petals and the, the, the shape of the space between them. And then considering what's the quickest way I can transfer the information I'm seeing. It seems to me to be um, a wise thing to, to do it, um, to find the simplest way to transfer what it is I'm seeing and see if you get away with that. It's a kind of, maybe a, a you could say a kind of a laziness, you know, wanting to find the swiftest way of describing the thing. But sometimes you do get away, I think, with, with very little. So what I'm doing here is putting some ultramarine blue, some cadmium red, and some tit no cadmium yellow and titanium yellow, titanium white in together. I put the ultramarine blue in because it looks to me as though the white has got a hint of coolness to it. And I'm just loading the, the brush is kind of loaded up with that color. I could scoop it off and, and um, and lift it up again just to say like a, it's like a shovel shoveling up snow and then turning it over um, to paint down what I'm seeing is the petal as it comes to meet the trumpety um, edge you know there's a, a negative space between the, the first petal and the, the trumpety bit of the 
daffodil. I'm just going to see if this might work for what I'm wanting. And Fiona, no matter how um, dark the green is underneath, if the if you've scooped up the paint like that, you'll be able to chisel out the light, you know. Yeah. Um, no, <clears throat> you might not want to do it so thickly everywhere. Um, you might not want to have to do such such thick paint everywhere, but I think you'll find like there's other ways too of you can use collage as well, and even just with your fingerprint, you know. Um, it can be a way to describe the inside of the daffodil. And it looks to me then as though there's another little one down here um, diagonally below it. So another little petal. And with my eyes half closed, this one too feels as bright as that one does. It's like a teardrop shape, this one here. It's just using the brush to kind of pull and create, I suppose again it's kind of seeing geometry or seeing the simple shape and trying my best to explain that and the, sh the shape of the space between it. Now I wouldn't be slavishly doing this everywhere but I feel like there's something about considered mark making in one area that lets the rest of it breathe again mm -hmm. and lets you appreciate the rest of it so well and if it's a thing that you love you'll be focused on it and then you can do something else where it's like dessert come back again you know you kind of there's something quite exciting I think about that energy of, of really observing, really finding the character of one flower. Um, okay. And with my eyes half closed, to be honest, all of that is not, just about all of that area where the, the flower converges here kind of doesn't, it's all, there's no big boundaries around it really. There's no huge change in color and tone. With my eyes half closed, I feel like it's all fairly um, softly merging into one another. So I'm just using the cadmium yellow in order to kind of pull the paint that's still wet into it. It might, yeah, I think that's okay. And then I'll do more of that color that I made earlier for the, the petal that sits above it here to try and get that shape. So I'm mixing again the blue blue and the um I stuck it into the wrong colour now. A bit of the ultramarine blue. Just very little actually. And then the um cadmium yellow and mostly it's white I think. Just to get a good thick opaque and I mix it until it's one colour because I want it to read as one colour and I think I want more white in it actually that particular petal. <coughs> so yeah, so personally I don't want streaks of different colours going through it because I feel like it's the impact of the full form of each petal that I'm, I'm enjoying in the daffodil there. So I um, scoop, scooped it up again and really keenly observing what's happening here. What size is this petal in relation to the one beside it? And maybe placing it down and pulling and lifting at the other edge and then carrying on to the end of it. It's almost like a parallelogram that's a bit wider at the at the top edge. And again, I want to re-establish this shape here. It was a bit lumpy underneath it and it left it kind of a hairy edge. Um, and then there's something here that's maybe a little bit more yellowish to describe the stem, the top of the stem where it meets the um, daffodil. There's a little bit here that's a triangle of that lightish, yellowish kind of colour as well. And then I want to get more of the clean cadmium yellow because it looks as though at the end of the trumpet there's a lovely bright frilly bit here that seems quite characterful. Maybe you can use a slightly smaller brush and then you put your brush in water. Um, and I think that's cadmium. I might put a touch of the lemon yellow in with it. There it is. It's almost like you win the lottery when the thing you want is actually here. <laughs> <laughs> you probably picked up that vibe. <coughs> okay. So, yeah, because I think it's maybe a combination of the lemon yellow and the cadmium yellow. <clears throat> you know. I think the lemon yellow, and 
then like let the color really the oomph kind of on the bright petals because the sun falling on the light yeah. of a daffodil you know it's there's something very um attractive about that it's beautiful okay i don't know if this is the color now might be a little bit i think that's not too bad so i've got a lot of paint on there now sorry it's been longer i'll just give myself another five is that okay mm -hmm. yeah. i'll see if i get somewhere <clears throat> all right so i'm just kind of noticing there's a lot of paint on here it's the quarter inch brush i think is it a half inch brush and i'm, I'm kind of happy enough with the, the width of it for describing the little frilly edge of that daffodil part there um let's just see and as soon as it gets a bit thin i'm going to pick up more paint because i don't want the green coming through at this bit particularly because this is one of the brightest bits of that trumpet the rest of the trumpet isn't as bright and I'll see then if I want to do anything to the body of the trumpety part once I put in the edge. <coughs> right, like, make it a general shape there for a while. Um, something like that, I don't know. I mean, it's darker there, so I could make that a bit darker, but I wonder too if maybe it might help to, um, to eat out some of the background colour in between those frilly bits. Um, you know, with a clean, a clean brush, it's, got, it's been wet, but it's not, it's not that wet. I'm going to see if I can pull in some of the, the shapes. It's an experiment really to try and grapple with exactly what is happening here and how can I make it as true to the daffodil I'm seeing as possible. And even the small minute bits, maybe especially those bits, are the things that might clinch it for you. So I'm making a dark green now. Desperately trying to catch something. I think maybe if I put some of the dark green in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's going to do something. Because it's... A, it's a very clear shape to me from where I am. There seems to me to be um, that the back, the background is a kind of a helpful dark to catch the sculptural shape. Really, I made it to kind of go in here in a couple of places, but I don't know. <laughs> I guess. Your sounds are really gauge, like, oh yeah, finally something's working. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, uh, the silence, nothing, nothing's working. Really. No pressure. You don't have to do the <laughs> even. Uh, they love it, really. <laughs> um, but I think that colour's helpful because it's allowing me to sculpt out. Um, yeah, like I can hear now again, um, kind of caught into that, because it's really the clarity of the daffodil shape that is what appeals to me this time anyway. Um, and so I'm wanting to gain, to get that clarity. And where was the green that I was using? I'll mix it up again, sure. So it's just the green, the focus green and the brown. All right, maybe it's, yeah, it doesn't matter. I was gonna say it's maybe a bit dark, but it's, like it, it's all right. Just now I want to just outline, I want to kind of capture the angles and the clarity of the edge that I'm seeing on this. And it's got some thick paint underneath it that's kind of lumpy and it's not letting me really get the clean edge as I would ideally like to get it. But it doesn't matter that much anyway. Okay. Sometimes if you can't get a thing, maybe there's maybe it's better to move on and try some other thing. You know, that it's not necessary, the thing that you'd be chasing. You know, sometimes we can be like, dog chasing a scent like trying to and then he gets stuck with it <coughs> so i mixed up a bit more of the um eucalyptus -y, i hope green um with the blue because i think it <coughs> really looks to me like it's featuring lower down the stem like maybe there and maybe a touch of that and even actually down here i think i could get away with a bit of that eucalyptus on the other side of the trumpety bit and then there's a less bright petal that's um, in that area too. 
I mean, that's, there's a kind of a triangle of some dark colour there, I think. Um, that's virgin on the twee, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah. I think what I'll do is make a, a dull yellow now and just occupy the space of the trumpet. Sometimes, you know, I deliberately show you what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> Higher rights, as normal. <laughs> Um, I'm just trying to find the kind of a dull yellow that'll work for the trumpety bit in order that what I'm seeing as being really bright, which is the end of it and the petals, is going to um, read as bright in my painting. So what am I doing? I'm making a kind of a dull yellow. <laughs> okay, I'll just hold it. Um, making dull yellow for this area here, which when I half close my eyes, it's quite a bit darker than the rest of the daffodil is. I'm not sure it's this dark colour, but that's what I've got now and I want to go over it. And then I think I want to um, continue the dark here so that it doesn't read it so that's a dark shape that's just needling in. It's, it's the background, you know, so it can be looser out here than it is close to the daffodil. Um, yeah, for that sake. Maybe I'll just go to collide. So then there's the opportunity too of using a little bit of collage. It might be actually no harm to do that. Like I could imagine that little one over there having a, a film collage petal or something. You know, the one that's sticking out there. Um, you know what, I'm going to put it there for some reason. I think that might be okay. It'll be a little bit of a smoother area to paint over. Hmm. Yeah, just subdue it a little bit there. And then maybe just that other petal, the fourth one that I'm seeing. You kind of get the idea though, don't you? Mm -hmm. You can see what I'm looking for, even if I'm not finding it. <clears throat> um, and then it goes off there, there's a little slightly brighter one there, and this petal that comes down here, it chisels another background shape between it and the petal beside it. Then it and then it twists on itself and extends out again, something like that. And then it's going back. The direction of growth and there's a little bend here. And I think more of that um, eucalyptus leaf again up there. You know, you can kind of once you once you've um, been for quite a while on one bit, you can always go back to somewhere near it and then standing back see. It's really saving it. Ah, it's not too bad. Okay. I suppose basically what I'm saying is when you're wanting to make the, pit, the um, daffodil stand out over the green, um, there are ways to do it. You can layer up the yellow in order to make it, you know, so, so to kind of let it dry. You could even put on, like with this one over here, there's the yellow over the dark would be hard to, to do. So you could put on with a dry brush, the shape of the petals extending out like that. There's a little diamond shaped petal here with the white and then leave it alone for a while. Um, and when you come back, you should be able to paint the yellow directly onto it, no bother. Or you could play about with collage for those kind of ones. And a little bit of red and yellow together would give you the trumpety colour for that one, I think. I know you're probably like, let me get back to my own bloody painting. <laughs> but, uh, I'm kind of, but yeah, just, 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 just to put a touch of the warmth into the mm -hmm. trumpety bit then. But I think a lot of it is about lifting up enough paint too. Like you don't want it to be all thick everywhere. So the kind of layering of thin layers um, should let, let you get to something. And we have also got the cadmium yellow that will um, allow you to make a really nice bright mark. You know, it's a lovely lush, lush kind of a color that, that yellow. So that might work even on its own without the white underneath it. Sometimes you want to be careful with it though that it doesn't just go flying down the page, you know. Um, but 
I think this is what we want the yellow to sing out. Mm -hmm. And the foil of the dark is often the thing, so maybe you might even make your dark a bit greener, darker, the green a bit darker, I mean. Yeah. And then your yellow will pop. Because um, it seems to me like everywhere it's about the yellows now, and find your shades, like get the blue, white, yellow, get the reddish yellow colours. And you and I have much more faith in you than I did in myself there. <laughs> so use whatever is available here for you and your own stuff. And oil pastels, yes. There's also lovely cadmium yellow oil pastel that might be exactly the thing to do your yellow to. Yeah, that's what I bought because on the shiny paper I find the sun doesn't work so well. So there's a few boxes of oil pastels over there if you want them. Okay, thanks for your attention. Thank you. 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 Thanks for watching. Bye.